getting images to stack correctly in Deep Sky Stacker and in Pix Insight has been really difficult with the 405cc camera from SV Boney. I tried lots of different methods and the actual stacked images that came out were not able to be processed or they were a really weird colour. So I downloaded Astro Pixel Processor and that finally worked on one of the images that I'm working on today. The problem I had with the images before was that they were different colours when they came out so they were not correctly calibrated and also I had these weird artefacts in the images so if I zoomed in you'd see these purple blobs even with Astro Pixel Processor I was getting these purple marks and in the end I did get two good images from the 405cc but this is the whole video I hope you enjoyed there's two images here we looked at Andromeda and also the Pelican Nebula as well Can you all guess what this is? Um, so this is, uh, I would say it's first light, but it's not first light, it's second light with the SV Boney um, 105cc camera. I'm on an EQ5 Pro mount, which is guiding. I have never ever had guiding figures like this. These are amazing. They're really good, really good guiding figures. So if this is the imaging period, and then we've got a bit of dithering. Uh, so the plan, let's have a look at the imaging plan. So tonight we're doing um, 100 exposures, and I wasn't 100% sure what gain to put on. So I kind of selected 200 and an offset of 25. It might be slightly blown out in the middle, I'm not sure. But I can actually see, I don't know if you guys can because of the YouTube compression, but I can see some of the details on the galaxy already. So this is M31. Um, this is Andromeda. I had so many problems with getting the actual raw data to stack. I even took all the calibration frames several times because I thought I'd made a mistake somewhere. And in the end, it's just weird. I just don't know why I'm getting these weird marks in the images, these, these sort of purple blobs in the images. So I've had to work very hard to try and process those out. <laughs> I've started my battle against light leaks by putting some black felt around the base and that's just held in place with an elastic band. So I cut a square of black and then held it in place. And I've also wrapped the focuser, but this is still loose deliberately so that you can adjust the focus. I was worried about light going in there, so I might have to tape that, but I. I might just try this for now because I looked inside and it looks 
reasonably well blocked off there so I'm not sure I'm going to need to do that but I'm going to give it a test uh, it is a um, almost full moon tonight and I am going to use a narrowband filter so I'm going to use the L Enhance which isn't particularly narrow but it's narrow it's the narrowest filter I've got and um, see how we get on and I don't know if you can see it there's bats flying around lots and lots of bats and it's cloudy at the moment I believe it's going to get a lot. Oh, there you go. You can see the bat flying around there. Um, I believe it's going to be clear in about an hour and a half or so. This evening I'm going to try and image the Pelican Nebula. I'm set up with the 130 PDS with a ZWO guide camera and around here is the SV Boney 405 colour cooled camera. Let's see how it gets on. I'm hoping that this should be a real success this evening. I've tried really hard to learn from my previous experience with this camera. Welcome to the live stream of the Pelican Nebula. The mount doing a flip, a meridian flip, so it's slowing the mount it says. So it looks like it's now settling after the move it says. Open point craft for me. It's just taking an image and solving it. Hopefully this will solve it. Success, so it's solved it. So the target is within 95 pixels. So it's solved it this time really quickly. It's starting PhD2 guiding. So let's see what this first sub looks like. This is 180 seconds sub. I'm in astrophotography tool and we're going to use the flat aid to take some flats. I've connected the camera and we go to tools, CCD flat aid, and then we need to calculate our target ADU. Uh, using a calculator, we go two to the power of the bit rate of your camera. And in this case, it's 14 bit, which gives me 16,384. You divide that by two, which gives me 8,000 192 and that's the value I've put in here then the ADU percentage variance range within 5% and then the uh, shortest exposure of 00, zero uh, 0.005 and then I need 30 of them and then the maximum duration of 2 so I'll run this flat aid it then says do you want to override the existing plan and I do so I'll click yes and then go into camera and we see it's populated the results here so I'll just click start and it will then take those exposures for me great it's now finished the flats aids plan The 405cc camera has a different Bayer pattern to the one I'm used to. It has green, red, blue, green. So it's G, 
RBG as opposed to RGGB, which I'm used to on my cameras. And for some reason, I'm really struggling to get the data to stack properly. And the really difficult thing about this is I'm trying to get to a workflow where I know if I follow the same workflow, I'll be able to get a decent result. But I, I just can't seem to get that workflow. Everything's inconsistent. The images are actually really good. They're not bad at all, but it's just such hard work to get the data to stack. And I hold my hands up. It could be me being a complete Muppet because I often am, but I just don't understand why with my other cameras I can stack images together but with this camera it just proves such hard work. Anyway let me know what you think. Without a doubt the 405cc camera is capable of taking really good images but it's just very difficult to stack and to get a workflow that works really well. I hope you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.